when I was building this bug, um, originally I started building it with the beam suspension like most Volkswagen bugs have. However, I, I, I did the front and I had put extended arms on it and, and, and some of that jazz. Then I went back and I was working on the rear of the bug and then I worked on other aspects of the bug. And, and it kept bothering me that front suspension. I just, it, it's, it's a nice system, but I, I thought I could build something a little bit better if I made it more like an A-arm suspension. So I came back to the front, I ripped all the beam off and everything that goes with it, and I designed and built an A-arm suspension that I'm really happy with. I haven't blazed down the trail with it yet, but um, I'm real happy with everything that it's given me thus far. So I want to show you guys some of, I want to show you guys how I designed it as long as you understand that I'm not a suspension designer. So I'm just going to show you what I did and what mine is and you can take from that what you want. If you want to apply some of that to what you're building, that's awesome because I'm really happy with mine, with how mine came out. But if you don't agree with some of it and you think that I'm crazy, that's your right too. I'm just going to show you what I did. The first thing that I did when I was designing my system is I bought these CarTech combo spindles and I bought these Jamar combo disc brakes. The reason that I did that is I needed the spindle, the spindle and the, and the brakes so that I could assemble them and bolt them onto the tire. Then what I did is I set the tire where I wanted it to be when I was done. So when I, when I say that, what I literally did was I took the tire, I made some fire, some two by four blocks that I clamped around it so that it would hold the tire up and in position. And I measured off the body and I set it where I wanted it to be. Once I knew my track width, then it was time to make the lower control arm. That's what I was gonna start with. Before I could make the lower control arm, I had to figure out what my center mount was going to be. With the research that I did, and with the experience I have thus far with suspension, I had decided that I wanted it to be raked up seven degrees. So this, this portion of the chassis here is going up seven degrees from the chassis that the body sits on. And I decided that I wanted to make it as narrow as possible. So what I did is I took two inch and a half 095 DOM pieces of tubing, I put them together and I tack welded them in place. That's part of this that comes up here. One, one comes up and bends out this way. That's this one right here. The other one comes up and bends up this way. Those two pieces come down, they're together here, and they run straight back, they connect at the chassis, and they come up at seven degrees. So once I had that, then it was just a matter of taking measurements here from my pivot points on the spindles and on the chassis and then I created a uh, a jig out of some 2x4s and some plywood and then I uh, welded up the lower control arm. I did for the most part guess roughly where I wanted the uh, the shock absorber to connect to. In hindsight I should have moved this in a little bit farther. I should have moved it back to about here. Um, because these are 10 inch shock absorbers, 10 inch travel shock absorbers, and they are what's limiting me from getting maximum travel out of this setup. Once I had my track width and my lower control arm, the next thing that I had to do was figure out my upper control arm. That's actually where most of, most of the layout comes into play. Um, what I did for this is I built my upper control arm out of wood using hose clamps and zip ties and vice grips. What I did is I had a piece of wood going from here up to the center of the chassis, um, but I had not, this bar going through the middle yet, I had not installed that yet because I didn't know how high or low it needed to go. So what I had done is I had just taken a, uh, a piece of plywood that I had mounted to the lower bars and then on that piece of plywood I could adjust 
up or down where I was connecting this upper control arm that it was making out of wood. So I had full adjustability on this end and then down here it just connected at the heim just like this one does. What I did when I had that is I could cycle the suspension up or down with the shotgun absorber taken off and I could move the length of this control arm um, I could move the height of it up and down and I could see what what effects those had on my suspension and so that's what I did and what I ended up coming up with was a measurement that gave me good um, let's call it positive camber where the, the top of the tire leans in the top of the tire leans in as the suspension drops as the tire comes up I actually would like it to lean in a little bit but I was trying to design this so that as the front wheel came up it could actually go past my fender a little bit and since I'm trying to keep this as street legal as possible I didn't want to cut this fender back very far at all so what I did is I found a point that when the tire actually starts coming up it actually cambers out a couple of degrees which helps me get past the fender a little bit. Um, that's kind of a cheesy thing to do, but it's helping me get more suspension. And since the design of this is more for low speed mountain trails, I'm not too worried about coming down jumps at 60 miles an hour or anything like that. So that's what I went with. That's where I got this elevation in here. And that's where I came up with um, how long to make the control arms, which in all actuality, what I ended up coming up with is the upper control arm is almost exactly the same length as the lower control arm. However, they don't run parallel. The upper control arm is, I think, about an inch higher than the lower control arm on the inside. And I think, and that's where, why when it goes down, it pulls the tire in a little bit, and when it goes up, it has a tendency to push it out. So that's how I came up with the upper control arm. Once I had those dimensions, then I was able to take a paper template, and I've actually got another video where I show how I fabricated this. But I took a paper template and came up with a design that cleared this shock in full up and full down position and cleared portions of the chassis and, and gave me everything that I needed. One thing that I was doing at the same time that I was making the the wooden template for the upper control arm is I had made this mount here for my rack and pinion steering but it wasn't welded to the chassis actually I drilled this hole in here so that before the skid plate was on I could run a zip tie through here cinch it down to this tubing and then I could slide the whole rack and pinion forwards and backwards on this lower rail here so what I had going on is this rack and pinion was movable. The upper control arm, when it was made out of wood, was movable. Because what I had to do is I had to find a position where the rack and pinion, because it's so narrow where it connects up here, worked in conjunction with the upper control arm. Because if you, get, if you don't get those to work together, meaning have the lengths of your lower control arm, upper control arm, and your steering rod, pretty close, then what's going to happen is when the suspension cycles, you're going to get bump steer, which is when as the suspension cycles, it'll actually alter your steering a little bit. And that's, that's one of the worst things that I didn't want to happen. So while I was making all sorts of changes on the upper control arm, I was also experimenting with sliding this back, sliding it forward, and when I would cycle my wooden jig up and down, I was also watching what was happening to the bump steer. Um, I actually ended up with a setup here that has very, very minimal bump steer. It has actually none. This is ride height right now. It, it has basically none at full droop. The steering stays exactly like it is. As it goes up to full compression, it'll have a little bit of a tendency to steer out, but I'm talking minimal, probably probably like a degree or two. It's it's as close as I could possibly get it. And my, my end result was basically this bar ended up being relatively parallel with the lower and the upper control arm. 
and it's also in line this way. Ended up being that that steering link is parallel with, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it ended up working nice and it, it looks symmetrical as well. So once I have that, then I tacked that in place. It's all welded solid now, but when I was building all this, everything was just tacked um, so that if I needed to make any major changes while I was doing it, I could. Before I made the upper control arm, or before I had installed the steering, when I had just the lower control arm built, what I did is I set my shock absorber on there and I would set my, uh, my spindle at uh, perfectly straight up and down. And then I would cycle the suspension as low as I could go before things were starting to bind. And then I would run it up as high as it, as it seemed like it could go because the upper control arm and the steering weren't in yet, but I would take it up about as high as I thought it could go, which at that point was just roughly at the top of the fenders. At this point, I wished that I had designed it to go a couple inches higher. I might go back and do that, but that's what I set it for initially. That's how I came up with the angle of this shock observer, how far it's leaning in, and uh, where it connects up at the top. So I had to, what I actually had is there's, there's a piece of steel running through here, and I had a two by four vice grip onto this two by four, and then I had a, uh, a clamp wrapped around this shock absorber. The springs were all taken off, and what I would do is I could slide the two by four in or out, and I could adjust the height of the shock absorber, and then I would clamp all that down, and then it would cycle the suspension cycle the suspension up and down and I got it to where I was most comfortable with the travel. Once I had that position I left that 2x4 there, I left everything locked in place and then I I just designed all this this upper bar and the shock mount and all that with this clamped onto that 2x4. That's how I came up with all that. And then once I had all this tacked in place I was able to just remove that 2x4 and it stayed where it was. So that's actually how I determined where the upper mount of the shock absorber goes because it's it's a 10 inch shock absorber yet the suspension's getting 15 inches so you have to take a lot into account as to how how much you lean it in and how high your connection points are. That's actually one thing that I think I'm going to go back and change because I can get a couple more inches of travel if I change some of that around but I'll do that at a later date. So basically that's it. The steps were get the combo spindles, the combo brakes, put all that together, mount it to the wheel, set the wheel and tire to the track width I want, figure out what I wanted to do for the center mount, tack weld that in place, um, and then fabricate my lower control arm. Uh, then at that point make the jigs to hold the shock absorber, cycle the suspension, find out what angle and what elevation I want to mount that to, then build the upper portion of the frame to mount that to, then make the mount for the rack and pinion but make it movable, then build the wooden jigs for the upper control arm, cycle all that stuff together to get the, uh, the desired effects that I was looking for. Once I have that, tack the rack and pinion in place, fabricate the upper control arm with the center mount, and then the only thing that I had to do, the only part that was tricky about that was designing the upper control arm so that it cleared the shock absorber. You know, I had to make sure it offset it like this, and then I couldn't, I couldn't install it as far back as I wanted to because uh, right here is my steering shaft, which comes in on an angle. So I had to steer clear of that. But that's it. And uh, so far I'm real happy with it. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys like it. I hope it helps somebody a little bit. If you have any direct questions or anything, let me know and I'll see if I can help you out. Thanks for watching, guys.